Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome on in. Um, I see a lot of familiar names and also a lot of new names in chat. So just in case this is your first time here, hello and welcome. We are Czech Games Edition. We are the publisher behind games such as Codenames and Galaxy Trucker and obviously Lost Runes of Arnak. My name is Ray. I am the in-house Twitch streamer here at Czech Games Edition. Every Thursday, I normally play a segment I call Thinky Thursday, where I sit down and play a strategy game by myself, usually. But today, clearly, we're doing something a little bit different. I am joined by the amazing, breakout, award-winning designers of Lost Runes of Arnak, Min and Elwyn. The plan is for today is we are going to be doing a Q&A with our lovely designer friends, Min and Elwyn. I've got some talking points that I want to chat about, but this is primarily an opportunity for you guys to ask questions and get live answers from our designers. So feel free to drop your questions in chat. Oh my goodness, we already have so many questions. All right, I'm gonna start this out a little bit simple and then we'll get into some of the questions from chat. First question that I have for you guys, simply because I think a lot of people don't know this about you, um, because you go by these two single, somewhat cryptic names on the on the, the box, Min and Elwin. I feel like a lot of people don't actually know that the two of you are husband and wife, which I find super interesting. And I, I've heard this story a little bit through the grapevine, but I was wondering if you could start off by telling Chat, who may not know this story, how the two of you met. Because if the two of you hadn't met, there wouldn't be a Lost Runes of Arnak because it was such a collaborative process between the two of you. We've met actually pretty young when we were about like I was 15 or something because we had a common hobby and we like to actually go to these uh, live action role playing events and mainly because we could then fight with these wooden swords <laughs> which you really like. And everybody had a nickname. It was just a normal thing there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I was Elwyn. You know, I used to have this long, beautiful hair. And Ooh. I elves, you know. And is there photographic evidence of this phase of your life? Because I need to see it if there is. <laughs> I, you know, no. <laughs> Dang it. What was the decision like to, because I see some people asking like about your names in chat already. What was the decision like to choose to go by Min and Elwyn professionally as opposed to like your full legal names. Not that anyone gets into board games for like the stardom and stuff, but I'm just kind of curious what, like you just, Min and Elwin, that's all you go by. I find that so interesting. We actually discussed this, um, it, it wasn't like easy decision mm -hmm. because we we don't know many uh, designers that we just use nicknames, uh, especially in the board gaming industry. But yeah. like one thing for us is like, that's how we call each other. So it would be difficult for us to learn how to talk about each other any other way yeah. we, and we we even experienced that before it's like yeah so me and it's like so who's this mean oh that's that's you know misha so that's 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 her <laughs> and so yeah so that's that was probably the biggest decision and the second one it's actually quite tough to pronounce it for english speakers and so we already know like people are struggling with vladia kvatil and vladia suki and all, yeah. all other big uh, authors and designers so we said yeah mina elvin i think will be easier for everyone else soften your razor asks if you could imagine a 10-year anniversary edition of arnak what would you wish to include what would a 10-year anniversary edition of arnak look like to you in a perfect world it will have inserts. Ooh, inserts. Yep, I know that would that would make a lot of people very happy. Oh, Barefoot Bug asks, "What's your favorite?" Speaking about the the expansion, who is your favorite expedition leader? Like when you sit down to play the game, which is the leader you choose and why? I have a few actually. It's hard Ooh. to pick one, but for me, that's definitely the Mystic because he's very interesting to play. Definitely. And I also like the Falconer just because I like her <laughs> personally. So. Me too. For me, it would be probably the, the leader I played the least. I, I just like mixing them around, just always trying new ones. This is the same with board games. I always try mm. to yeah. try something new. So, yeah. So, Mr. Harvester asks, could we expect, so I'm sure a lot of these questions are going to be speculative about like what's coming in the future. And I'll preface this by saying there's a lot of stuff Min and Owen can't talk about, but um, I'll still ask the questions anyways. So Mr. Harvester asks, could we expect a campaign slash legacy Arnak expansion at some point? And in parentheses, they say, please. That's um, interesting. Like, I always love to have some um, story within the game. Yeah. So that's basically why we even did the, the solo uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. the, 
search for Professor Kutil. So that was like sort of my idea that I pushed for and Alan was actually not very happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> really? really? Perfect. It was actually quite interesting history because we had limited amount of time to finalize the game. Yeah. And it yeah. came to kind of like the solo design. And we we had different ideas and approaches. So we ended up designing two different separate things. And so one resulted in just the vanilla solo game. Mm -hmm. And second idea we expanded and released as a search for Professor Kutel. That's yeah. so interesting. It's it's like Michael's approach to games is usually he's he likes very streamlined. Yeah, streamlined, yeah. So it's like very easy to explain, but mm -hmm. it still offers like interesting decisions. That's that's the basic solo game in Arnak basically. But I'm more about the experience. So I love when there's a story and something to explore and a really different twist on rules. But that's usually a little bit more heavy and like for people to jump in, they have to learn the rules. And mm -hmm. also it took a lot more time than I expected because originally <laughs> when we were thinking about this expansion, we were like, okay, we are going to do like a few, sh like A4s with text, you know, and there yeah. will be a few little extra rules. And then once Arnak was getting a little bit more popular, popular, we were like, okay, we shouldn't really like rush this and we should put a little bit more thought about it. Yeah, all this stuff into it and um, yeah and then we expanded on it and there was the up happening and everybody was supporting us and we were like okay let's let's give our, our all into this and it took uh, several months to actually yeah. finish it it was, it was like three months at least quite I a think. project in the end but it was worth it so. Oh, that's so that's so interesting I find I kind of want to go off on a quick small tangent um, you, because I found it interesting how you mentioned that you had two different ideas for the for the solo expansion of what that would look like, and I know a lot of people give this advice of like never don't work with your friends, you know, don't go into business with your best friend, and the two of you are spouses, and what is that like relationship like trying to design a product with someone that you're you know that you're married to? What does that process look like for the two of you when you both care about something so much and you're trying to make it together, um, but you're not like you know colleagues who just go home at the end of the day and can come back the next day with a fresh set of eyes. I mean, this is really great, actually. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. It's, it's all about, I think, discussions. And uh, so even before we get to first prototype, we spent hours, I mean, days just discussing yes. the concepts. And, and imagining how, how the game would play and then trying to see the flaws before, before we actually make it yeah, so yeah. it can save time, sort of. Mm -hmm. And we are actually each other's toughest opponents. Uh, I mean, like once something gets passed, like that we both both of us agree on something, it usually has some. It can sometimes even look like an argument to other people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's okay. We can we can do it. It's just like. Um... <laughs> We have really strong personalities to both of us and yeah, we yeah. really want to make our point across and we really like, but we also think about the, what the other one says. So it usually uh, yields good results then in the I end. I mean, clearly, whatever the two of you are doing, it def it clearly worked. I mean, keep doing what you're doing, obviously. And I mean, um, the worst case scenario, if we don't agree, we end up with two things. Jamie Wood asks, they ask, how long did it take to design Arnak from start to finish? And I guess you can define the start of Arnak however, however you want. Well, from the first idea, I think it was two and a half a year. I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. It's actually shorter than I would have expected for such yeah. a big game. It was very quick, actually. I think it was just because uh, it was actually Mean's idea how to combine tech building with worker placement. It was kind of like the core mechanics. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just worked surprisingly well. In yeah, one of the first we managed to yeah. put it together quite well. It was, I, I dare say it was luck uh, mm -hmm. because <laughs> usually we like, it takes a lot more time to combine stuff so that it really starts to play and it's fun. So mm -hmm. this, in the process of, uh, it was two months, I think, till the first prototype was playable, which is extremely short. Okay, so next question, because we got a lot of them. I gotta start, <laughs> I gotta stop rambling. Knights Around a Table says, in early Arnak designs, did you ever consider giving a 
gain reward to players who discovered dig sites, like the rental fee you see in Lords of Waterdeep or Monopoly. Yes, we did. Okay. Uh, it was it was part of the design from. Early, yes. yes. <laughs> but then we kind of disliked how the dynamic worked because it it kind of um, helped some players too much in, in mm. our design. It didn't work as well as the, in the other games. So it was a little bit king making, you know, in some ways. Mm, sure. Too much. Yeah. Um, that's a similar I question. We really tried a lot of mechanics that didn't make it in the end. Yeah. So it changed a lot during the time. So. We had been saying, uh, we will keep this for expansion. And we kept saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, what were some of the other scrapped mechanics that you like really wanted to include, but you just couldn't, couldn't quite make it work? That comes to mind was originally Guardians, where cards that came into your deck. And oh. I was really fond of that mechanic and I wanted to keep it, but then it really didn't work. So we had to oh, have it. Oh. But so your concept of uh, the research track was quite interesting. Yeah, we actually wanted the research track to be sort of legends that would build like um, you'd actually be getting these little pieces of them and build them on top of each other. But oh. that was. Um, yeah, at some point it got too complicated, mm -hmm. so it needed a streamline. <laughs> but it was yeah. very interesting because uh, I mean, even wrote these little stories, and you could basically combine three levels of research, and then it would tell a story together. And oh, it... Yeah. it would have like a beginning, and then a crisis, and then a resolution. You know? So Wait, was... that's so cool! Oh, <laughs> thematic, and it was great, but it I was loved just... it, but it didn't work. It so... was just too much for. A... I feel like sometimes you have this kind of like innovative budget and I yeah. feel like we spend it elsewhere. So we would need to kind of like strip another part of the game if we want to keep it. Um, okay, next question is from Stacy Everdell. They ask, what was some of your inspiration for the game? And that's a very broad question. So I guess you can take that wherever you want. Definitely, because deck building and worker placement are our favorite mechanisms. That, that's basically why we decided to go that road. We, we thought it's like, wow, it would be so cool if we managed to combine these two. And so obviously we like a lot of deck building games and we like uh, worker placement games. So we're like we already mentioned, we talked about Lord of Water Deep, which is a brilliant game. Uh, Pillars of the Air, that's really agricola. But also like deck building from Dominion to Ascension. Thunderstorm, like yeah. Star Realms, mm -hmm. all of it, it's just... Basically, uh, the idea came because I was wondering why nobody really like combines those mechanics. Mm -hmm. Try to come up with like, a way to do that. But it was actually <laughs> funny when we announced the game and then within, I think, two weeks, another two publishers announced yeah. the same concept. It was like so funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and now they all get compared to each other because they're all deck building worker placement <laughs> games, even though there's like no other overlap <laughs> in the design. But I mean, that's great because we really love that. So um, mm -hmm. we, we like Dune, for example, Dune Imperium. Yeah. It's, it's one of the games that we really like and we're looking forward to uh, Endless Winter because it should be the, another game that should yeah. come soon. It's so. interesting to see how other people approach the topic or the mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie Wood asks, have you ever considered designing more games in the Arnak universe? Well, basically, um, we were very busy designing <laughs> Arnak, so we didn't have much time to think about anything else. But we did sort of talk about it, that it would be cool to maybe expand on, because we have, we've written a lot of lore from the world of Arnak, sort of, so we have lots of material of, about the visuals or stories and mm -hmm. history so it would be cool <laughs> yeah. jamie wood says can we possibly expect a cooperative expansion in the future which i know you can't definitively say anything but is cooperative expansion something you'd ever consider i mean we like cooperative games mm -hmm. and so we're not saying no i just i'm afraid that it doesn't I don't want this to sound like a promise because then <laughs> yeah. it can make people sad. So nothing is designed. This mm -hmm. is like just we are not saying no to that idea. We think that it would be cool, but we didn't start even working on anything like that. So um, Stacey Everdell says, are you both adventurous in real life or just in the game? Well, we used to be very adventurous, but then we had three kids, you know, so <laughs> now yeah. we are not. 
when, but when it's possible, yeah, we like to go outside and hike and go somewhere with a tent and sleep in the wilderness. Ooh, <laughs> that's um, nice around the table says, did the artist hide any secrets or Easter eggs in the game? It's, I think so. <laughs> I know about the one, so I can, is it legal to spoil them then? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, the answer is yes. Now you have to go find them yourself. I turn tables says, "What are they?" Panda said, "Lajek." Panditschek said, "Lajek." One of the illustrators, like one of his, uh, like any type of game you see from him, there will be his little dog somewhere hidden in it. So, so Wait, that, that's really. Fun. So he sneaked it into Arnak as well. So that's that's for sure. I guess another kind of question going off of that is I heard I heard this from someone else in CG, so I don't know if this is true. But I was told that Min actually made a language for Arnak that you can find like on the components. Is that true or is that myth? It's not actually a language, but it's okay. maybe more like a written form of a language. So it's basically symbols that mean words. So yeah, you can, you for can... example, read the little tablets that you have. And you, you see the same runes on most of the paintings because it, it was part of the lore. We had this huge, you know, huge, it was it was significant big document for, for our artists where we talk about the lore and the mythology, everything. So then they use the runes so that they would that it would make sense into their illustrations. So even like if some of the artifacts have these runes on and they actually make sense or they should actually make sense uh, when it comes to the use of the artifact. So oh, cool. Stacy also asks, how did you connect with CGE? How did you come to work at the company? And I find this a very important question because I, I find something that a lot of people don't know is that a lot of our designers are in-house, but they're not like in-house designers full-time. They do other things. You know, they started doing something and then they became designers. So like, what is, so I guess the first element of the question is how did you come to work for CGE? And then the second question that I want to ask is what's like your day job at CGE? When you're not being designers, what else do you do? You know, it's, um, so a long time ago, like in history, there were not that many modern board games in Czech Republic. Uh, like board gaming, it's a real big part of our lives. It's been over 20 years, I think, when we started really uh, to dig into it. And at that time, there were only um, some modern board games and they were not published in Czech, uh, Czech language. Mm -hmm. Most of them were imported from uh, Germany. Germany. So we had to learn some German. I know. Like oh, games. cool. All my German comes only from board games, so I have very limited vocabulary. <laughs> and yeah, and so- Very useful, you know, token. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah, you can have a very nice conversation. Uh, so, uh, and there were not like a big group of people who would be into this hobby. So there were like maybe one, two hundreds of people. And we met sometimes on these board gaming events. And eventually from the, some people that were really into this hobby, uh, for some of them it became their day job. So they started some companies or uh, friendly local gaming stores. Mm -hmm. And so we knew these people. And so we basically were friends with some people who started Czech games before. So we, we knew these people before Czech games edition. It was mainly because we attended these events where the playtest team was taking part as well. Yeah. So we kind of played tons of uh, Space Alert before it even came out. And oh, wow. Remember, Elven stayed up like entire night just playing the expansion for Space Alert. <laughs> it, was, it was the best. <laughs> I can imagine. Space Alert is great. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite games, yeah. So then we just got to know each other and we knew how the process of, I don't know, testing games already worked. So. We kind of became employees after that. Mm -hmm. Because before we lived in abro abroad and when we moved back to Czech Republic, we somehow reconnected mm -hmm. and got hired. And first we worked as testers. Yeah, uh, in the, in yeah. the digi digital part of CGE, just testing Galaxy Tracker app and the through the ages app. Mm -hmm. So. It was actually a lot of fun, you know, just playing games for a living. So. Yeah, it's a great way to get into the industry too, if anyone's curious. Getting in as a tester is a really interesting entryway point into the into the industry. And I think it was part of, because, you know, we've been doing this for free for many years because we just really love all the process of creating the board game. So then people knew us and it was just easier for us to get hired. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Eventually, we started to work on board games development. So we started, I think, first project where I was more involved was Pulsar 2849 by yeah. Vladimir Suchy. So I, I was the main tester there. And ever since I started to work and helping in the development team there. And then so now, are you both still in the testing department now as well? Or have you moved on to other we parts of the company? Changed our spe specialization sort of to, to board game development now. Mm -hmm. So more in, in that department. So helping with the testing and seeing how the, like, the, how the design works and helping to improve it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to kind of combine a bunch of questions. I see a lot of people talking about the theming of Arnak. And mm -hmm. I guess the, the kind of general question would be, how did you settle on the theming of Arnak? And I also know personally from other people at CGE that the theme was originally something very different. Like what was the, what was that collaborative process like to end up at the theme that we currently have today for Arnak? It was actually going back and forth because when he started, it was uh, just like exploration and maybe a little bit more into like history. Mm -hmm. So you would be like exploring parts of Arnak, um, which was not called Arnak back in the day, you know, but yeah. <laughs> back in the day and, and finding artifacts. And it was a little bit uh, like Indiana Jones themed because you were getting those artifacts and getting them into the museum, you know? Yeah. So, but then we kind of shifted into more like a fantasy setting where mm -hmm. artifacts had these effects. So it was more a little bit like mystical, magical, and more like a, you exploring a fantasy land. Yeah. Then our graphics actually advised us that maybe that was not the best idea. Maybe we could go back to this like original setting of adventure and mystery, more like a archaeological so mm -hmm. it's like it's really magical but it's sort of unknown uh forgotten you know culture that you're exploring and the mystery lies more in not knowing how it was used than in magic itself so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think the biggest shift was that we because we are like all kind of adventures but we in this game we want to focus more on the research part, not like the mm -hmm. you know, like Tomb Raider, you know, like just we are going for a riches. We wanted to really focus on we are here to learn, and so we started to because originally we kind of like set it up in the real world, and it just didn't work well. And we said, no, let's let's just let's just really focus on designing the world that's kind of like an alternative history mm -hmm. that we just mm -hmm. found this island. And so how we actually, because even the original name was different. Uh, it was the, Lore Hunters, actually. I that, remember. <laughs> what we talked about before, it was, uh, we were supposed to be building these stories originally, mm -hmm. not researching, like just research, but it, was, it right. would be like learning the lore of the original culture. Mm -hmm. So that's what the research track re represents, but it's a little bit less thematic now. So, mm -hmm. so, yeah, so it was a game about... Hunting the lore. <laughs> Unknown. Learning, like, learning the lore. Hunters, yeah, makes sense. Um, since you brought up the art, someone mentioned. Ooh, Knights Around the Table again asks When you started seeing the artwork for the game, which illustration or illustrations like got you the most excited? What was the illustration you saw where it was like, oh, it's all coming together? This is my favorite piece of art for the game so far. For me, it was definitely the mat, like the main board because um, yeah, I just showed the, the illustrator this like photo. I was like, it'd be cool if you could look something like this. And then he came up with something amazing. You know, I was, I was blown away. It was awesome. Stacy Everdahl says, you worked with several artists. Did you have a clear picture of what you wanted Arnak to look like? Was it very collaborative or were you more hands off allowing them to have their artistic interpretation first? It was actually uh, very collaborative because we really like discussed it with them even before the artwork started or even before we had like a document that would describe stuff, we would discuss how it could look like and mm -hmm. they drew some sketches uh, first like for us uh, based on some of our discussions. So they would give us some sketches showing the possible directions and we kind of pick off some of them and say, okay, we really love this picture and let's build a part of, a, of the history of the Arnak around this style. And then we expanded upon the lore and they kind of brought it all to life. 
it was one of my favorite parts. And that brings me to a question that I have, because I wasn't here when Arnak was being developed. And I'm curious if there was ever a piece of feedback that you received from like another CGE team member. Just like, what's the best piece of advice you received from a fellow CGE staff member about Arnak? I wonder, I think maybe the biggest change was moving away from set collection, because originally mm. you were actually collecting the, the artifacts as sets, and that's where you gained some of your points. Oh. But the feedback that the people really didn't like that much. So we have reworked that idea and that's where the, the whole concept of artifacts being activated when you buy them and then mm -hmm. I the tablet later on was born. So I think that was a really good feedback because I it like was, it more now. Because we felt like set collection is a perfect fit for, for what we had there. But it's also so tempting just to focus on the set collection and ignoring the other abilities of the artifact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it just works so much better when you have this freedom to choose anything from the offer there. Oh, this is a fun question. Uh, Knights Around the Table says, was there ever a crisis moment during the production of the game? Yeah, I remember one very big one. Oh boy. Have... <laughs> no, um, it was, uh, we went to this event uh, where we had got really like, um, so from some playtesting, we got really bad feedback, you know, and oh, no. it really felt like we will have to basically rework the entire game and it was like after a year of working on it a lot of the time so it hit me pretty hard it was like okay I i'm done with this okay, I'm, I'm not going to invest any more effort into this because i just can't do this anymore because it would mean all our work would go out the window and then we really needed to talk about it and we, we said okay no we we're keeping this design and we will work on it a little bit more but we won't do drastic changes. It was actually great because uh, people from CG really picked us up and they said mm -hmm. like, no, just really, you're the designers. Uh, we know this yeah. is your first game, but yeah, just trust your instinct, go for it. And I, I think it was a really good decision at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was really eye opening as well, because uh, yeah, I think I kind of put the feedback from people on a pedestal a little bit more like, and I needed to turn kind of realize that's not everything and you need to filter it as well and you need to really think about what you want from the game. Ooh, Jamie Wood asks, what was it like to release a game during a pandemic? How did that change the process for you? Oh, well, it, it was actually when the pandemic hit, we were really worried about playtesting mainly. Well, apart from, you know, being worried what the pandemic will do, but this is where, the, where it hits the, the game they'll give it them you're good went the most <laughs> because uh, we really need to play it on the table and see people's reactions to kind of be able to push forward and see where the game should go mm -hmm. and we we were able to do some of that before the pandemic hit but then the final push of the game really happened during the pandemic and we really we were really get grateful for having people like in-house to do some of the playtesting because mm -hmm. without that, we would be kind of unable to do that. Yeah. Ooh, Sop and your razor has a great question. Have you ever seen the fan-made components slash storage upgrades? And do you have any specific ones that you particularly like or don't like? We've seen, seen tons of those. Like, yeah. I really like seeing they those. They look great. <laughs> we, actually, we actually got some of them printed, like those 3D, uh, you know, designs. So just to try them out and see them and we use them when we are playtesting. For example, for the expression leaders, you know, we, we playtested a lot with our knack like on the table. So mm -hmm. that was very useful actually to have the storage and everything. And I had some fans, I think they came to me during SNHP and they just gave me this beautiful components too. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, it was such a nice moment. This kind of ties into another question I wanted to ask. And you know, that might be, that might be your answer to it already. But do you have a favorite interaction with a fan or favorite bit of like fan generated content, whether or not it's a component or like art or something you've seen online? Um, one of the fans of our Lost Rings of Arnak, uh, uh, Mario, he was posting many useful strategic tips and guides on VGG and he even created a lot of videos and I think those were super helpful. So we decided to actually in the expansion, one of the leaders, it's uh, according his liking. And <gasps> really? So, yes. I and, didn't know that. Wait, that's so fun. 
And so it was such a nice moment when we finally met in person again during Essen Spiel, and I could just give him and show him like his little assistant there. It was nice. Oh, wait, which assistant? Oh, I, I want to know now, but I guess they don't have names, so you can't tell me which one. But yeah, it's oh. the one uh, like, they're kind of like giving you compass, and then when you upgrade, That's it's so Mario. Cool. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. Um, the rare, I think the rare Norb says, where does the word Arnak come from? Well, actually, um, it's a name we liked. <laughs> it doesn't really mean much or like it, <laughs> <laughs> we just came up with it and coincidentally, it may be sort of like similar to some of the words that I had in my world building. So it was, um, supposed like to sound similar to how the city you are looking for was named and yeah we just looked for a name that would be memorable and nice and we also tried to find a name that wouldn't mean anything and we did not succeed that's true <laughs> at least the sound <laughs> so what is what does arnak mean you see uh, because we did our google foo and we googled arnak but uh, we didn't know that when you say arnak in French, it means a scam, but you write it different way. So it's like Arnak Q-U-E, you know? And so we didn't catch that. So now in no, French, in edition of, <laughs> French edition of Arnak is called Narak, actually. Nice Round of Table says, among the six expedition leaders, did one end up winning more than others? And they say they had their, their suspicions about the Baroness winning more often than the other ones. No, actually, <laughs> this is this is this was a really cool experience because uh, we had the luck and privilege to invite the top 150, I think, Elo players from BGA from Board Gaming Arena to join the testing, mm -hmm. and uh, it was, and we really uh, must thank Adam Spaniel, he's the designer of Project L, who helped us to lead this testing. It was amazing, and we collected so much data that. I, I was amazed how, because usually you need to play some things by ear. Um, I think the characters are really well balanced. Mm -hmm. There's a difference in their complexity. So some of the characters you need to learn to play well, and it may take longer. Mm -hmm. But if you learn to play them, that character well, you are able to score as, mm -hmm. as well as with, with the rest. So. Ooh, um, Don C. 1972 says, who is, now I think this might be a little, this might be a contentious, this might be kind of a spicy question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. They say, who is the better Arnak player between the two of you and do your children enjoy the game? Hmm, hmm. that's a tricky question. <laughs> you should float my BG stats. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I... Um, Michael actually played more of it uh, ever since Board Game Arena came out mm -hmm. because I was unable because of the kids. <laughs> So he was playing out there, and I think he is a better player now <laughs> because he has more experience. This is this is what's true with all other board games as well. I am when we are playing for the first time, Mean usually wins, and I I need to work hard to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> start and winning. Then he plays it like about fifty times, and I have no chance anymore. You know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, our kids really like the game. They actually played with them and. It was fun to see them because they are not quite the age yet to play mm -hmm. it, but they managed somehow and they really enjoyed the, awesome. the artwork and yeah. it was fun. Um, kind of going off the, the expedition leaders a little bit more, Stacy Everdell asks, did you have the idea for asymmetrical characters from the beginning? Was that always something you wanted to do? That's actually interesting. Yes, it was something we wanted to do, but we couldn't get it to work mm -hmm. while we were working on Arnak. Uh, I guess because we didn't have the experience yet and we didn't really understand how to make them different without making them much stronger. Mm -hmm. That came later on when we understood the system more maybe and sure. understood to make the the starting deck even different, you know, and with really. because the, our original attempts to make them uh, make them asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. Like players was, uh, it always resulted in the players gathering too much of stuff, and then the mm -hmm. end game was really like getting very heavy with you having too much to spend, and the last round was very, yeah. Yeah, the curve <laughs> was all. <laughs> Ra Rim Dan and Wizard of Oz eighty nine both asked the same question. They ask, are there any plans for the expansion to make its way onto BGA? 
Well, we had this discussion because uh, it would be great to have it there, but uh, we are basically waiting for uh, CGE to, to kind of like finalize some of their current projects and then we will have a discussion about the future of uh, online presence of this expansion mm -hmm. because there might be some other exciting plans as well. So we don't know yet at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I really love this question. This is from Jamie Wood. Do you still enjoy playing Arnak after all the time developing and testing it? Are you sick of it yet, basically? We actually still like yeah. playing it. I really awesome. like it. And uh, you know, like the moment when we feel like it's getting stale, we can design something for it. So exactly. that's that's exciting as that's well. True. <laughs> that's true. You can always make you're in charge of making more content and keeping it interesting for yourselves. You have the power. Great question from Rolling Phantom. They ask, I've always been interested in designing a game. I get so far and always hit a dip. My question would be, how do you cope with the design process and what you what do you prioritize with fitting mechanics into a theme or the other way around? Do you start with the mechanics and then fit that into a theme, or start with the theme and fit that into mechanics? I would say we usually try to find a core mechanic mm -hmm. that kind of uh, feels unique, new and fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, or at least that's what we did with our <laughs> and then we kind of look at it and see what theme would fit and we at the same time we would like it so it's it's kind of mechanic first but then it's only like just the first step you know and then you connect it with theme and you think about the other branching mechanics that expand the game with a theme in mind already mm -hmm. so you can kind of design the game around the theme but you already have something to build upon mm -hmm. But it's true that like there's another game we cannot talk about where we <laughs> had the opposite, where we started with the theme and we are, we are trying to yeah. find for a mechanic that would be interesting. But it's still, I think it's still like more in the starting phase that you're trying to find something that works. I think you're trying to find a good connection with the theme and mechanics. So that, that's probably mm -hmm. what you're looking for yes. when you're designing it. Mm -hmm. Knights around the table, kind of going with this the idea of our next theme, they ask, who came up with the thematic decision not to kill guardians, but to overcome them? Um, and then in some cases, ride them as helpful friends and have them, you know, benefit you. I think even the fact that we have guardians, right? That was... That's, that was my idea, actually, but it's, it's funny. Like, um, the entire idea of guardians came from me watching my kids play, you know? Mm. Awesome. I was thinking about Arnak, I was like, there's something missing and they were playing with le some Lego on the table, you know, and they were shouting like, let's kill the giant beetle. And I was like, <laughs> giant beetle, that's a good idea. So that's how the guardians came up. So. And yeah, and they would be sad if we killed them, right? So the <laughs> it felt like it more interesting to be able to befriend them, mm -hmm. kind of. And I, I felt like if you, I don't really like just, you know, going around games and killing everything you see. And here we are a researcher and you're kind of exploring a forgotten culture and you're trying to understand it, you know. So even the, the animals are kind of strange on this island and you're trying to find out why, you know. And if you can befriend them and find out more that way, then that's what you do, you know. It, it kind of fits in this lodging for me. Yeah. Uh, Knights Around a Table asks, is there a rule that you find that people mess up more commonly than others? Is there a commonly misinterpreted rule? Sometimes when I read about some people struggling with basically their scores or something doesn't work, it was multiple times when I realized they are just walking with their yeah. archaeologists from place to place. That they mm. don't perceive it as a worker placement. For them it's kind of like one big adventure that takes four hours and yeah. <laughs> um, Jamie Wood asks, is the solo mode of Arnak available on BGA? No, I, I don't think it is. I think you can play multiplayer, but not solo. But we developed uh, basically this, but it's a companion app that you can play your solo with. So uh, if you go to solo.arnak.game, that's something that can help you to run a solo, but you need to have the game. Right, yeah. Um, another question is, in the base game, without the professor, do you think it's possible possible to succeed with an artifacts-heavy strategy? Well, 
yes, uh, I think so. <laughs> it's just uh, it's not guaranteed. You need to kind of have, have you, you need to have good artifacts in the right moment. You need to have good assistance for that strategy. And the professor is basically the answer to uh, that. People don't usually play this strategy, and I think it's an interesting one. So uh, with professor, I think more people can experience it, and then if you have this experience, you can. Give it a go, even with normal arnak. Ra Rim Dan says, how did you go about balancing the artifact cards? We have this huge Excel sheet. <laughs> <laughs> like one thing uh, that is important as well is that um, they are not perfectly balanced. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it kind of should be that way because there should be some tension and competition. Because like one thing uh, about arnak that we try to achieve is that you need to really consider if what you do on your turn if you are going to fight for a spot uh, in certain like locations some areas if you want to really research faster than someone else or if you are going to snatch that artifact or that that item so some of them are objectively better mm -hmm. we try not to kind of like make them like what we consider good balance is that we we didn't want to have like auto buys it like when this appears I will always buy right. it, but there is a good chance I really aim for it if I can. So this is that, like what we try to achieve with, mm -hmm. with the balance of the cards. Um, there's a couple of questions of people asking, you know, what did the original inhabitants of Arnak shoot with all of those arrows? Or who left behind <laughs> all of these tablets? <laughs> so maybe that's an opportunity for you to talk a little bit about, you know, the people of Arnak, maybe? There's a lot to talk about, but I, I don't know where to start. <laughs> like, this is kind of abstraction. We, we were trying to find three resources that would represent your archaeological findings. Mm -hmm. One thing that you you don't... I think we really succeeded at some something is, is the jewel, the gem. Mm. Because you just think it's a gem, but it actually... We tried to design it in such a way that it looks like a primitive way of making this liking of Ara Anu, their bird god. So when oh. you find the way, you will see the beak and an eye. But yeah. it's kind of like really primitive how you probably expect some archaeological findings. So yeah, so we have like this kind of like three tiers and we chose jewel, the, the arrowhead and tablets. Mm -hmm. It's basically it was like sort of it's a representation, the the token. So it was like a knowledge and maybe the weapons that you find. And then the, uh, the gem is supposed to be more like a s sacred object. Mm -hmm. So like maybe something you'd find in a temple and you could study to understand more. Ra Rimdan says, what are some of your favorite games that are not Arnak? I already mentioned Space Alert. I really yeah. like that. I think it's such an original concept. I really like Mage Knight, the board game. Brilliant were game. you a, were you a big fan of Vlada before you came to work at CGE? Yes. Yeah. That, I I loved his design. From, so yes, definitely. <laughs> that's true. I like I I really like also Galaxy Tracker. That's another of Vlada's <laughs> games. <laughs> but we play a lot of games. And it's hard to say like you know it's hard to pick any favorites. I know I really I really love terraforming Mars. And there's a new game. Uh, it's Bitoku. I really like this one. This one. And I'm also like fan of a lot of storytelling games. So mm -hmm. like like Seventh Continent or even Gloomhaven. Oh yeah. And we really like the light fantasy. Like uh, we really like games uh, by Ryan Lucas, who is also uh, mm -hmm. not only desi designer, he's also illustrator, like above and below. And yeah. we really like playing these games with our kids. <laughs> That's really cool. But also many of the deck building games like Ascension, Dominion. I really like those. I like I. Played so many of those. So. so we always try to keep our collection at 300 games, and it, wow. this is like really tough because yeah, because we've been in the hobby for so long, yeah. and so, it's yeah. so difficult to always to let a game go because we just really like games. <laughs> Do you remember? This is a question I always like to ask my my friends in the board game industry. Do you remember a game that got you into the hobby? Do you remember your gateway game? I do. Do. But for me, it's it's hard to say because I was playing th this game, The Hobbit, ever since I was like ten, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. So I don't know if you would consider that <laughs> playing I, like anything. Yeah, any game counts. 
So, so that would be it for me, I guess. Yeah. I think the for me, I remember it as it was the eye opener. I was 16, and I my friends introduced me to old Avalon Hill version of Dune. It was the old Dune uh, game and it was like eight hour game and I loved it. It was so different from anything else I played yeah. at the time. I wouldn't enjoy it playing it so much now, but in that time it was like, wow, this is so different. Yeah. But he couldn't actually afford to buy it at the time. So he made an, he went and made like his homemade version of it on this like, we still have it. <laughs> still oh, have... I love that. That's so cute. Oh, um, but one of my last questions is what do you like to do besides board gaming? What are your other hobbies? What do you do when you're not busy being, you know, award winning designers and playing games all the time? Do you have other hobbies that you enjoy? <laughs> and they're both like, no, just games, <laughs> just silence. Like, nope, that's it. <laughs> I have actually many of them, but, um, uh... But I, I'm a very creative person, so I like to do anything with my hands, like from drawing to jewelry to, I don't know, sewing. So yeah, I have lots of hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me it would be, besides, besides board games, which is really almost, I would say, lifestyle for us, yeah. uh, I really like sports. So that would be one thing that I'm missing the most during this COVID season. Yeah. So I really hope to, to get to that again. Uh, I think we will wrap it up here. Min and Owen, thank you so much. You guys were so, you had such interesting insight. Um, chat, I hope you got to learn a little bit about the process, about Arnak, got to learn some fun lore. And if you're anything like me, you're gonna go tear open your copy in a minute and look at everything with a whole new fresh set of eyes. We also have a dedicated Lost Ruins of Arnak channel in our Discord. So if you have, you know, more questions in the future you wanna ask, or you're looking for opponents or players on BGA, you can, do that in that channel there. And yeah, I think that's all I've got.